Hello and welcome to the show Behind the Scene with David Bedin from Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Good morning, David. Good to see you. Thank you for calling from for, for all of our listening audience, wherever they are. What would you like to talk about today? What do you think of the, of the Congress uh, play? Well, the, in the U.S. Congress has come through for Israel once again. Actually, they've come through for integrity. The United States Congress conducted a full-scale study of the school books used by the Palestinian Authority and UNRWA and came to the conclusion that they are, they are brainwashing the next generation of children for war. And as a result, the U.S. Congress commissioned uh, what they call a GAO study, a government accountability, government, organi government organization accountability study. And um, what, what, they, what they found is that the, the uh, school books are preparing the people for war, and they recommended that the United States government not, no longer support the Palestinian Authority school system which is, by the way, also the basis of the UNRWA school system, the United Nations Relief and Work Agency. Now, here is the story that you need to know. First of all, this is one of the, one of the school books. I've shown this before to you. This is a fifth grade school book, and you open it up. It's an innocuous school book for literature. And you, as I turn the pages, I find the picture of Dalal al-Mughrabi, who is a, who is a uh, here she is. Okay, now Dalal al-Mughrabi, She's presented in the school books as a role model for children. And there's three pages to the teachers on how to teach her story. Now, Dalala Mugrabi, you'll see her, she's very well dressed. She's landing on, on the beach near, uh, in, in Tel Aviv. And yes. she, well, what, she, what the, the story is, when she landed on the beach, she didn't come there to swim or to be in a beauty contest. She, she murdered a photographer on the, on the beach. And then she proceeded with with five terrorists, Arab terrorists, to hijack an Israeli bus and to kill everybody on the bus. To kill all 38 people on the bus, and in the in the shooting that that ensued, she was also killed. Now this is the role model. Where in the world have you had a role model like this? Uh, by the way, some people say, well, I'm sure the Nazis did this too. The Nazis did not do this. The Nazis did not have school books where they produced they they promoted murder. They did the murder with, but there was no. They were all, all try, always trying to uh, um, cover it up. This time they do not cover it up. Now, the, so that's the good thing. What happened? The Congress commissioned a, a commission and commission a report. But what you need to know is that the United States government, for the past year, the report was supposed to come out last April, and on April 17th, the day it was supposed to come out, the United States government issued a veto what they call a, a, a classification of the books, of their report, and they would not allow it to come out. It's censored to this day, so that the American people have no idea what's in that report, and Congress is not allowed to look at the report. When we spoke to Senator James Risch, the chairman of the U.S. Senate, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee subcommittee on the Middle East, he said if he looks at the report, opens the report, quotes the report, he can be arrested because it's been censored. Now, President Trump, who knows what's in these school books, because our agency got, were able to get get this to him directly. He has he has uh, he knows what's in the books. He's directly responsible for censoring the books from the American people. Uh, if he no, my analysis, President Trump knows about that. Absolutely, absolutely, he knows about it. Knows what's in the books. He knows what's, he knows what's in the reports. But he wants to carry on with what he calls a peace process. And um, as other American presidents have done, and that comes ahead of integrity. This is not a matter of pro-Israel. This is a matter of integrity and lack of integrity. The fact that the, the, the findings of the congressional study of the Palestinian Authority and UNRWA textbooks is being denied access to the American people and the American Congress. So what's the, what's the next step? It's galvanized public opinion. People on programs like this, which are not uh, politically correct programs, which are which get to the people. If 10, 20, 30 people were to contact the, your local American embassy and say, why are you doing this? By the way, all the details, the sort of details of this uh, action appear on our website, which is called IsraelBehindTheNews.com. 
If 10, 10, let's say, Swedish citizens were to contact the American embassy in, in Stockholm and say, why are you censoring the truth about, the, about the, the nature of Palestinian authority and UNRWA education, they would feel pretty uncomfortable about that and it would affect, it would, it would affect them. It may change policy. But, I mean, how can you how can you do anything to the Congress? Well, what, what the Congress can do about it or the, in the Senate? Veto allocations to UNRWA. That's what they can do. And allocations to the Palestinian Authority, even more important. Because President Trump has already announced he's not going to give any more money to UNRWA. But uh, in terms of the Palestinian Authority, they keep giving money to them. This is, a, this is a very nasty situation. Now, the Americans pulled out, and the Saudis, the Qataris, the Germans, and the British moved in. Not good. So, well, the Americans can't do much about the Saudis and the Qataris and, and Germans. And... They can do plenty. They can open their mouths and say this is inappropriate. That's, that's the worst thing you can say. It's inappropriate and should not be done, not in the, not in the uh, spirit of peace. Why, why do you think they do that? Preserve the image of peace, the image that there's, by, by keeping information away from the American people, uh, the president and the, his, his, his associates, uh, uh, Kushner and Greenblatt, can look, and look people in the face and say, we're, we're trying for a peace process. That's why they're doing it. So you don't think like they have something in the in the, in, the, in, the, in the sleeves that the that we're gonna do that we're gonna say that, but really we don't think that way. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, this is not a matter of going through the motions. This is a matter of a policy a policy to obfuscate the reality of the Palestinian Authority and UNRWA from the American people. And this has been going on uh, since 1988, when President Reagan recognized the PLO as if the PLO was suddenly pro-peace. But we know that from one of President, President uh, Reagan's advisors, Dr. Alan Keyes, that the Saudis put pressure on the American government to do that. So that's what we're facing. So I don't know what I mean. Not a if the Trump administration saying this and this and this, but we can, all the, all the other people in the world says, oh, look at them, they're trying to make peace. But really, they know they're not going to succeed because of a million things. Let me tell you something. When, to stop you for a moment. When you raise the expectations of a totalitarian country at war with you, that's the worst thing you can do. Is this what, what do you mean, like, if you, if you support, if you at least start to support them, it means you're killing Jews. That's the price. That, that, that is what it's all about. That's the purpose. That's the focus of Palestinian Authority curriculum. You can see our website at israelbehindthenews.com. We bought all the books. It was our desire to get the books for peace, the books for war, all kinds of books. There's only one kind of book there, and that is the kind of war that, that we, we've been through, 364 recent texts, and they have one theme to them, the war to liberate Palestine and replace it with Israel. Why do you think the, the Congress put a, a secret stamp, uh, stamp on it? Because the idea, look, very, I'm, a, I'm a nice person. I come to Congress with a, a small group of people who have done, um, done, done very, very good research. But it doesn't matter. They had to do the research themselves. They did the research themselves on our work on the Palestinian Authority curriculum, which is used by UNRWA, and they came, in, they came up with a conclusion that's their conclusion, not our conclusion. That's the whole point of what we're trying to say here. It's the same conclusion. Oh, yeah. Precisely. So what, what's the deal? I don't get it. Well, why would they wouldn't stop the books or stop the, the support, the economical support and all that? Because it's, it's, it's good for the, for the image of a peace process. It's good for America to have an image of a peace process. That's what they're trying to, trying to present. And what I'm, I'm hoping that, the, that, that 10 people who are in, in Stockholm right now watching this program will raise a question, an objection to the American government in Stockholm, the American embassy in Stockholm. You have no idea how 
important your feedback is if uh, you let the American State Department know something that they're trying to keep away from you. Because when 10 people respond, from their point of view, that represents thousands of people. So you think if 10 people from Stockholm write to the American embassy, hey, what do you, what, what's going on? It has an effect on policymakers. Well, well, David, what's the next step? The next step after that is to do everything possible to stop the situation of refugees in refugee camps uh, for perpetuity, forever. That has to stop. $1 billion, $1.2 billion a year is spent to keep these refugees in refugee camps. It's ridiculous. And that has to stop. We have a five-point program on our website, Israel Behind the News, about how to, how to bring pressure to bear against the donor countries to stop this, this, this ridiculous situation. But I thought that the Trump administration stopped the money to the UNRWA. To UNRWA, they did not stop the money to the Palestinian Authority Education. And when they stopped the money to UNRWA, then they, then they arranged for the Germans and the British, the Brits, to take the, take their place along along with the Saudis and the Qataris. So, life is a little bit more complicated than how the how the media projects it. So, what would well, what would that help if we push the Americans? If the other guys doing the same, the, the, their work instead. Not the Americans, because the Americans are the are the king are the kingpin of the uh, negotiating process what some people call the peace process. Is there any peace process? Absolutely not. Absolutely no chance, no possibility. That's it. But the uh, but by creating the uh, this the uh, image of a peace process, you get your your point across. You get your you get your a policy accomplished of selling and selling the product. And both sides of the aisle in Congress are supportive of what we're doing, and people in Israel do not know what's going on. What I suggest is people want to help us out, can sponsor a public forum here in Israel to show the, the school books and the school teachers and the incitement and the brainwashing that's going on. What if the conclusion of the Senate and the Congress about the books is the same as yours? Why don't they do anything about it? They do, not know what, they do not know what to do. It's that simple. I've given them the formula in terms of uh, being in touch with the American government, the American embassy, wherever you are. Uh, they're not used to qu questions which are which are which are something beyond you know where's where's the nearest hotel and where do I uh, where do I take a vacation? That's what they that's what they get from people abroad. Did you ask them to do something? We asked them to do several things. We, we, we created a, we have several issues that, uh, that they can relate to, which are very easy to relate to. Uh, we call it the UNRWA Reform Initiative. One is demand for an overhaul of the books. Two, stop military training in the schools. Three, demand a, a accountability transparency you know where all the all the money coming in number four uh, make sure that people have the opportunity to leave the camps if they want to and finally how about some uh, uh, some some stories of transparency because we know that a lot of the a lot of the money and food being distributed in, in Gaza and also in Jerusalem and the other places that would operates is basically a matter of thievery is the American media have any any knowledge about the books? Very little. Very little. If we had if we if we had a, a sponsor once a month to present this at the new findings of the America at the National Press Club, perhaps we would. But we we're we're in, we're a small agency and we can't afford that until until unless we get proper sponsors. That's what I can tell you. So the American people are kept in the dark. But it has nothing to do with sponsoring. He's just getting in 60 minutes a reporter and says, look at that. Nice story. What do you think? It doesn't work that way. 
It doesn't work that way. You have to be much more direct, much more like, for example, I'm we're right now uncovering a new program in the Arab schools uh, to stone Jews on the roads. And the children, when they get out of school at three o'clock, if they if they stone a stone a car, a vehicle, they get a prize. If they if they um, if they kill someone, they get a higher prize. And a young woman who was murdered three days ago in her car, leaving four four small children, uh, she was killed, and she's and the, her her killer is going to get quite a prize. And these are operating in the UNRWA schools where there's no trace whatsoever what that, what, the, what happens to the cash in the schools. That's right. what I just. Okay, David. Thank you very much. Good to see you behind the scene with David Bedeen. And remember, a book like this should not see the light of day. And certainly the 67 nations that contribute to Palestinian Authority education should not be promoting the legacy of this woman who is here is clad in the, in the uh, PLO flag, who landed on the beach. Murder a photographer and then then took over a bus and killed 38 people with her with her terrorist squad. That is the hero in their school books, and that has to be changed. Thank you very much, David Bedain from Jerusalem. Behind the scene with David Bedain, whenever we can make make things clearer about what's going on over here in Jerusalem, we'll endeavor to do so. Thank you very much, David.